Hi there, I hope everyone is doing well. In my last video, I took the traits that I had been talking about in my posts and used them as if they were somebody's top 10 traits that showed up in their Clifton Strengths assessment results and gave you guys a little bit of a breakdown as to how I would present them when we were doing a consultation with um, one another. So what I want to do now is talk about the bottom five traits. So the last few posts that I've put out, I'm going to use those as if they've shown up as the 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34 trait on the list of the 34 traits that show up. We all use, but we all use them differently and uniquely according to us. So for this person, we'll say, for these last five traits, we have consistency as number 30. So consistently see for this person means that it stresses them out to think that everything needs to be done the same way. They're maybe not a fan of having a system and a process in place for everything that they do. The idea of getting up and having the same thing to eat each day and having the same routine in the morning and then going to work and being accountable for the same exact tasks all day long is going to drive them crazy. They definitely need more, um, more individualization, more uh, differences and um, uniqueness throughout their day. So that is how consistency shows up for this person. And when they drop into thinking that they should do things in a more consistent manner because you're supposed to or everybody else does, then that's when that doubt is going to show up. They're not going to be authentic and it's not going to be comfortable when you're dealing with somebody like that. The next one is responsibility. So this person does not do well with feeling the weight of the world on their shoulders. Now, does it mean that they aren't responsible? No. Does it mean that they don't know how to be responsible when they have something in front of them that they need to get done? Absolutely not. Of course they can be responsible. It just means that that's not how they lead themselves into this world. If you have responsibility high, your brain is just automatically wired to think that, okay, it's up to me to do this and it's up to me to do that. And oh my gosh, the world would end if I let somebody down because I didn't. When you have consistency lower, you don't get as stressed about those things. You kind of are a little bit more relaxed about it. You might have a little bit more casual feeling about things and, and you might view a situation as, hey, if I didn't get a chance to do it, it wasn't uh, intentional. I wasn't doing that with malice. I just didn't get to it. So I'll do it when I can and no big deal. Um, that might be the way that they approach things. And like I said, they just, they, they get stressed and they don't do well with the weight of the world on them shoulder, on their shoulders. There's somebody that would do serve themselves and other people much better by delegating tasks and things that need to get done. So that way it all gets done, but it doesn't have to be all up to them. They trust in other people's abilities as well to do things um, their way. And then the next one is command. They're not one to stand up and take charge. They're not going to um, voice their opinion over other people's. They're gonna maybe be the ones to kind of sit back and see how things unfold instead. Like I always use the example that I was in a in a group setting and we were gonna take a, you know, a group photo of everyone. And of course, all the women are chit-chatting and, and carrying on their conversations while we're trying to get you know ourselves in order for this. And there's the person with the camera standing up on a chair like waiting and waiting for everybody to finally you know get in their spots for the photo 
finally one woman at the corner just started like, okay, you go here and you do this and if you squish here and you, and she took charge of the situation and got it done because we needed that at the time. And she felt bad for being so bossy. And I commended her on using her command strength because obviously that came natural to her to step up, take charge, be vocal and let people uh, feel directed by what needed to be done. If you have the command strength low, that's not going to be you. <laughs> you would rather crawl under a rock and hide than have to be the one to stand up and tell everybody where they're supposed to go and how they're supposed to do things. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing good or bad about where any of these traits show up for people. It's just how you are. There's other people that can take command over things. You don't have to be the one and that's okay. You'll lean into your top strengths and get things done in a way that's more authentic to how you operate. And then the next one is context. When you are somebody who is thinking about the past, um, this brings you down if you have it low. You do not find value in maybe always thinking back to your childhood or thinking back to your teenage years or even how things were done in the beginning of your marriage versus how they're done now or how um, your job went when you first started versus how it's going um, today. All of those looking backwards things do not serve a person well who has context low. It stresses you out. It can lead to depression for some people. And you may feel stuck and you have a hard time moving forward where it's maybe the direction that you want to go, depending where that futuristic strength shows up for you, where ideation is, some of those. Um, maybe even your adaptability strength, that's just being present in the moment now. Um, those things are natural to you. To constantly be thinking about the past and looking backwards, history does not serve that purpose for you in terms of leading you to the next. Um, and again, that's okay. Just be mindful of it. And when you know this about yourself, you can see and feel when it shows up. And then you can say, ah, I get it. I am stressed right now because I'm thinking that I should be doing things the same way that my grandparents did it back in the 40s or whatever. And that's not the case. Times have changed. And it's okay if I no longer follow the family tradition of everything that they've done over the generations. It's okay if I'm the one to change something for me in my life. And then the last one for this person is maximizer. When you have maximizer high, you are somebody who is always reaching for the next. You're always pushing for better. You have a hard time being satisfied and finding gratitude in where you are right now. When you have maximizer low, you often feel like you are not enough because you don't show up in a way that you constantly have to be pushing for the next. So if you are a student and you get an 80% in a class that you have really been struggling in and you tried your hardest and you got the 80%, you're going to feel proud of that. You're going to be okay with that and it's going to sit well with you. When you have maximizer high, 80% <laughs> it's not okay. You might be glad that you got an 80% versus a 70 or 60 or even failed it, but your mind immediately goes to, what can I do to raise that next time? And when you have it low, you're going to be okay with that 80% and as to where you are now. And you have to be very careful to not get caught up when you are around somebody who has maximizer high, you can't let them put that on you. That's okay for them. And you can applaud them and encourage them and be excited for them that they keep pushing. And that's where that respect piece comes in. When we know these traits exist where they do for each one of us, 
it helps us learn to respect those things about one another. I don't think you're lazy because you're not going to keep pushing to get the grade and to get the promotion and the next and the next and the next. I'm going to just realize that you are somebody who has to maximize or lower and you don't need all of that in your life to feel fulfilled and like you have purpose and like you have value. You're leaning into your top strengths that show up in a way that present your value and your worth to yourself and other people uniquely to how your strengths are showing up. So I hope this gives you a look at how important knowing these bottom five traits and what which ones fall where for you are in terms of understanding why you might feel the way you do or why other people might behave in the ways that they do. So if you want to dive deeper into that, reach out and I would love to do that with you.